Good morning, friends. Welcome to the chill Final Fantasy XIV stream. So there is new patch today. There is There shouldn't be a lot of story in MSQ. I'm expecting this to be kind of short, but that might be all I do on stream too. So this might be like a really short and sweet two hour little story stream, but it's gonna be chill. There is other content that I probably should be doing. <laughs> There's actually a lot of content that I need to do. But for right now and for today, I'm gonna focus on story. <laughs> That's gonna be the focus. So, I actually don't remember where we left off. So we got Astinian and TMO. Oh, that's right, the dungeon. That We ended off with the dungeon. It's pretty short? Yeah, I'm expecting it to be pretty short. It shouldn't be... Yeah, like this is the last MSQ we get before next expansion, right? So this should just be like a, a segue or like a, a setup. Shouldn't be that crazy. I might do some diamond farming later, I don't know. Actually, wait, wait, didn't they unlock the raid tier? So I could actually uh, farm that if I wanted to. Everyone else is gonna be doing Bajja, but I haven't, I'm so behind in Bajja that it's not even worth me doing. <laughs> Embarrassingly enough. <clears throat> raid isn't unlocked, why? I thought 5.55 was gonna be it. Oh, kill me. Leo, thank you so much for the 21 months. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you for the lyric island. I appreciate it. Ugh. The sunglasses on my character. Oh, yeah. Styling. I don't know. They've become like a staple. I have a hard time taking them off. They just stay there forever now. Immediately induced coma until November. I just really want the raid tier to be unlocked. I thought that this tier, this patch was gonna be it. I didn't, I, I regrettably did not uh, read. I didn't read the patch notes, which I probably should have. Although I saw the new mounts. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game so much. <clears throat> yeah, look at all the boyfriends in one corner. Bruh, bruh, I know, I know, right? <laughs> Isidian. Still my favorite thing ever. God, I'm so happy that he's here now. Feels it doesn't feel real that Astinian is actually a scion. Maybe it's not real life. It might not be. All right, story. Ah, Crystal, you're looking well. I take it you managed to squeeze in some rest. If you came hoping for tidings from Kryl, I'm afraid we'll still be waiting. But we do have some odd scraps of news to share. Scraps, she says. Lunar primals have been popping up all over the place, but the Alliance has the situation well in hand. Thanks in no small part to Harry Boulder and the others. Meanwhile, talks with the Beast Tribes are going even better than expected. Encouraged by Uldal's progress with the Amalja, Gridania has opened negotiations with the Ixal. Uh, Ixal, believe it or not. Oh wow, that's actually surprising. All of which is obviously very encouraging, but with the Telophoroi tel still out there, it's not as if we can afford to lower our guard. Yes. <laughs> Begging your pardon, but I come bearing an invitation for the Alliance. From the Alliance. A council meeting is due to be held in Alamigo, and your attendance is humbly requested. Ah, we were just making our- just talking about the Alliance. May I ask what's on the agenda? I believe the intention is to share news of recent developments and discuss what measures might be taken to combat the Telophoroi in concert with our new allies. The Beast Tribes have also been invited. It is hoped that they will join us in the fight against our common foe. Ah, so the Alliance would bring all of the Beast Tribes into the fold at a single stroke. An ambitious plan, give the given the delicacy of the negotiations, but may have an expedient one, considering the threat we face. Indeed, my lady, and for their part, I am told the Beast Tribes have agreed to attend. If the Scions too are present, all of Eorzea will be represented. That's really crazy, actually.
To arrange such a meeting must have been a quite an undertaking, not only diplomatically but, diplomatically, but practically. Pray, inform the Alliance that we, will be, we would be honored to participate. We shall make for Alamigo without delay. Bailey, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub. I really appreciate the support. Then I will bear your answer thither, thither, thither with all haste. <laughs> we look forward to receiving you at the Royal Palace. Yay. Hello, SP and all. You bought your emerald mount. Oh, boy. I don't know if I'll ever be able to buy that bad boy. Well, now that we've accepted the invitation, who exactly is going to attend? I move that you and Yishtola lead our contingent. Given how long you have worked to end, our, end summoning, it is only right that be, you be present for what promises to be a historic moment. I think we've all played our part in that, in that little endeavor, don't you? Uh, yes. Old President may rightly claim a seat, I do quite agree. But by your leave, I believe I shall remain here and lend what assistance I can to the coordination of our defensive efforts. I'm not coming either. Imerick will be there, and I'd rather not be interrogated. Oh, come on! <laughs> Imerick's gonna be there? Oh man, I'm, I'm avoiding that bitch like the plague. He talks about Imerick like he's some sort of ex. <laughs> he's his ex-boyfriend or some shit, he avoids him like the plague. <laughs> That's how I imagine their relationship. <clears throat> Very well then. Well, those with a mind to hold the fort get on withholding it. I suggest the rest of us make for Alamigo, shall we? You mean I did the most. Exactly. I mean, that's how the case is with the game in general, though. The Warrior of Light always does the most. Alright, to the Alamigan quarter. Such is the nature of being a hero, I guess. Whatever. In this patch? No, I don't think anybody's gonna die. Lux, thank you so much for the four months. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I don't think this is the patch where people die. <clears throat> no one's dying. Or, or, oh, 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 wait, you know what, um... You know what's more likely to happen, though? There will be a fake death. We'll si we'll think that somebody is dead, because what happened at the end of uh, Stormblood? Well, we thought all of the Scions died. Well, turns out they just went to the first, right? But yeah, they, they might do a fake out, like, Ooh, someone's gonna die, but, like, Expansion will come out and be like, Oh, no, they're not dead. I'm calling that bullshit. It's gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. No one's dying. Yet. Although I do hope that we have some major character deaths in 6.0. I think we have too many good characters. Some of them need to go. I think, I think it's your time. Oh, this is so weird. It's so weird seeing all the beast tribes. Esteemed guests, you honor us with your presence. As there is much to discuss, let us begin. Information on our taken brethren you have, yes? Hear it, we would! Yeah, we haven't seen the Beast Tribe leaders in a really long time. Beyond forgiveness these featherless ones are! With rivers of blood shall they pay! Freed our people must be! Also, I don't think the Beast Tribes were ever voiced? I don't know, it seems... I, I don't... In my, in my memory, I've never heard the voices of the Beast Tribes. We too would see your kin liberated. But ere we attempt their rescue, we must first find a means to negate the risk of tempering. If all else fails, I've always found cannonballs quite effective. <laughs> <sighs> and what of the prisoners? Would you see them slaughtered? 
think for a moment. Ponder, consider, think. If Merlwib truly intended to bombard the towers, she would have done so by now. Remember, we came here to find a solution together, did we not? Yistola spoke of defenders. I but offered a means to clear a path, should you require it. <laughs> Given the enemy's capabilities, we will all need to play our part if we are to have any chance of success. For if any here should give less than their best, it will be to the cost of every living being on this star. A paragon, the Empire, our very gods. How can we hope to prevail against such odds? That our foe is formidable, none would deny. But our strengths are many and varied. In this chamber, I see masters of strategy, masters of magic, masters of the land, the air, and the sea. And together, there is nothing in creation we cannot overcome. Keep talking. <laughs> I can never get enough of Imer talking. <laughs> this place keep going. I don't care what shit comes out of your mouth. Uh-oh. I beg your pardon? <laughs> what is it, Sir Walker? Do not express your passion thus. Oh. A little frisky will I do, perhaps. <laughs> so I get to say, I am proud to be counted amongst the Aussie's finest. It was his war cry. He was showing his Lisa enthusiasm. Hardy, we'll play our part. <laughs> we kobolds have not forgotten the crimes the Overdwellers committed against us in the past. But. Oh, sorry, I cut it off. Giving them purpose. Ah! Make mock of the Ixel, the Paragon does! Turns kin into puppets, pits brother against brother! Free them from his grasp, we shall! <laughs> Lynn, welcome to the stream. As Patriarch Zadar will attest, the Scions have granted us a means to free your brethren from their thraldom. This boon we will gladly share, that your people might never be enslaved again. We accept! We accept! Praise me! <laughs> They're so cute. taken a while, but I do believe we might be one step closer to a world without primals. Would that mean Philia were here to see it? We still have a long way to go, and we're going to need a lot more porksies. But we're moving in the right direction. If I may have your attention, there is one other point I would like to raise. As we can all agree, freeing those held captive must take precedence over every other concern. But experience has taught us that none save those with the capacity to resist tempering can hope to enter the towers unscathed. And even once inside, a still greater threat may yet await them, that which we call a primal. Needless to say, if we are to succeed, Engaging with such foes can only ever be considered a last resort. And so I move that we seek to prevent them from being summoned in the first place. Yes! Both prayer and ether are needed for the ritual. Should either one be denied, the summoning would fail. Indeed. And so we must endeavor to discover the source of the ether on which the process depends. Do so, and it may present a way to halt the summonings, or perhaps even neutralize the towers entirely. A promising proposal. While you are conducting your investigations, however, 
We will need to remain vigilant, lest the Telophoroi commit further abductions and summon primals ere we have the means to prevent them. To stand a better chance of keeping our enemy at bay, we would do well to coordinate our defensive efforts, sending reinforcements to assist our neighbors when needed. We, Amalja, would have been overwhelmed were it not for our newfound allies. But say the word, and we shall come. Aww. This is like kind of heartwarming. I see we are all in accord. Hmm. But what are we to call this proud fellowship of ours? I submit that the honor of naming it should go to the scion whose brave efforts have done so much to unite Eorzea. Ugh. What say you, my friend? Just keep complimenting me. <laughs> the Grand Company of Eorzea? I would call it one moment, please. Yeah, give me a moment. I need to think on it a little bit harder. Might I suggest the Grand Company of Eorzea? Alizé, that was my idea! I remember a certain someone pondering it once upon a time, and it seems as fitting a name as any. <sighs> she stole my thunder. I should have just said it. A fine choice. Whatever. For there is none here who does not love Eorzea. Aye, in that we shall ever be united. United in our gratitude for the realm that gave us life. Then let it be recorded that on this day, the Grand Company of Eorzea was born. <laughs> How long have we dreamed of this moment? And now that it's here, I... Oh, forgive me. Might we speak outside? He can't cry in front of everybody. Just cry. Oh. It's that bittersweet feeling that you have whenever you've worked so hard for something for so many years and it's finally come to pass. Exactly as you imagined it. Aww. Hmm. That's, that's low-key real sweet. Well, now that we are out of earshot of the other delegates, I hope you will forgive me if I speak my mind. Let me begin by saying that I have dreamed of this day since the moment I first set foot upon this, these shores, and that I was, at I was as heartened as anyone to see the peoples of Eorzea pledge their solidarity. Yet, even as they uttered their declarations, all I could think about was the conflict to come of the sacrifices that would be made and the lives lost, inevitabilities that I still struggle to accept. But at least now there is hope. The formation of the Grand Company of Eorzea is the first step, the first of many. Many and more. How to see you. How might we be of service? I seek Master Alphino's assistance in a matter involving Gridania's neighbors, the Sylphs. I know that you and yours have long kept a weather eye upon the crystal trade, the better to predict the coming of primals, and so you will be familiar with the Sylphs of the Ash Crown Consortium. Through their dealings, they have cult uh, cultivated relations not only with the city-states, but many other communi communities besides. Communities such as the Beast Tribes. Just so, it is our hope that we may, we may make use of the Sylphs' established lines of communication to coordinate the efforts of our new fellowship. Yet there remain certain practical differences between a trade consortium and a grand company. If the Sylphs are to perform their task effectively, they will require the counsel of one versed in the operational aspects of an armed force. An armed force founded within the self-same goal in mind, no less. The Crystal Braves, yes. Forgive me, Master Alphino, I know that it was a painful chapter in your life. 
but the experience may yet be the serve to serve the realm. In my hubris, I plotted a course for the Crystal Braves, which stretched far beyond the Order's initial conception, one intended to pave the way for the founding of what I intended to call the Grand Company of Eorzea. But my plans all came to naught, built upon a frail foundation of lofty ideals. The Order was doomed from the start to collapse under the weight of more worldly interests, and I have no wish to see this new endeavor suffer the same fate. Mayhap I ask too much of you. Not at all. You may count upon my assistance for what little it is worth. By your leave, I shall prepare a report including a list of recommendations drawing on the lessons I learned from the failures of the Crystal Braves. You have my gratitude, Master Alphano, and my trust. When your report is ready, pray share it directly with the Sylphs. With your guidance and the earnest efforts of every goodly soul gathered here this day, I have no doubt but that our fellowship shall emerge from the shadow of the Talafroy and flourish. Until next we meet, my friends. Before committing anything to writing, there are a number of people whose thoughts I should like to hear. Former Braves, you understand. Might you join me in seeking them out? I can't think of an excuse not to. Oh, that's so weird! <laughs> oh, I can't be me. Thank you. As someone who witnessed the Order's rise and fall, yours would be a reassuring presence. I'll join you, if, planned, if planning to, can, uh, to canvas the opinions of your former comrades. I will know it will be a lot quicker if we share the task of questioning them. Then mayhap Graha can lend a hand as well. I shall accompany Thancred back to the Rising Stones. Between us, I dare say we should be able to provide an accurate enough account of the day's events. We should be glad of your company, Graha. I shall explain the details on the way. Yay! More time with Gratia. I ain't exactly mad about it. Mhm. Mm yeah, Alphano has really, really, really come a long way. I feel like at the beginning of Final Fantasy XIV, he used to be so not hateable, but like, um, I don't know. He was just like annoying little brat, <laughs> and he's really grown up out of that. He's really come a very, very long way. Good development. <laughs> Freaking Alpha now, I'm proud of you, babe. How fascinating it will be to speak with them in person, though I gather con conversation can prove rather challenging with the Sylphs yet. What's this plan, brother mine? Before discussing the task at hand, I should probably admit that the report I propose is largely written. Long, not long after that fateful day in Ulda, I penned a detailed account of the organization's history, from the events that led to its inception to the failings that brought, up, brought about its demise. This I did primarily as a means of taking some semblance of responsibility. Never did I imagine that it might later be referred to by those seeking to form a similar organization. And while I made every attempt to be objective, the account was mine alone. Its events viewed from my singular perspective. For it to be of use, however, it must be broadened to encompass the viewpoints of all involved. Oh, only then can it answer what seems to be the crucial question, namely, why? After the Crystal Braves disbanded, did some members choose to remain with us while others did not? I see. You think you thought- You think the answer will tell us something about the nature of the ties that bind our new Grand Company together? And that this knowledge might help us to help us to prevent it from falling when these bonds are inevitably tested. That is my hope, yes, but the questions I would ask are uncomfortable to some. As the former commander of the Crystal Braves, I doubt that those who banded the cause would welcome my inquiries. Then Graha and I will just have to try. Meanwhile, the two of you can talk to the ones who kept the faith. A fine suggestion. Have care, however. Certain of my former comrades are of questionable character. So keep your wits about you, and let us reconvene in Gridania later on. No! If you have no objections, I have a mind to begin my speaking with real and uh, Alian. Ah, whatever, I forget. It's been a long time. If memory serves, the two of them will be attending an intelligence briefing in Castromorians. Let us seek them out there. 
fine. Now he's much more grounded. Yeah, I mean, like, Alphino was still a kid. I think kind of people forget about that. At the beginning of the game, he's a kid, and even now, he's still a kid. He is very much baby. But when you're a kid and you're forced to be acting as, uh, like, when you're a kid and you're put in situations that force you to act like an adult, you're gonna grow up a lot faster than most kids. So we kind of get to see that and experience that through Alphano. Look who it is, and what brings you two here? Wouldn't have had, wouldn't have anything to do with the big meeting, would it? In a matter of speaking, I've been assigned to a task, you see, for which I require the assistance of former members of the Crystal Braves. So you went to know why we decided to stick with the Scions, eh? Hmm, ain't an easy thing to put into words, that. As I once explained to Crystal, I spent a long time agonizing over my failure to alert you to the traitors in our midst. For my negligence, I was captured along with many others, and we were powerless to prevent the tragedies that ensued. Not a day goes by that I do not think back to those fateful events. By joining the Scions, I hope to redeem myself, and I will continue to serve the cause for as long as I am able. But that wasn't my only reason. When we were finally reunited as the Rising Stones, you refused to blame anyone but yourself for the fall of the Crystal Braves. And in spite of everything that had happened, everything you had suffered, you took us back without a moment's hesitation. We would not have blamed you had you turned us away, but when you gave us your trust instead, what else could we do but to try to repay it? Aww. That's really sweet. Nothing, that's what. As for me, my own tale, well, I always felt that the Scions have something in common with me old crew. The duty of the strong is to protect the weak. That was our creed, and I strive, still strive to live, uh, live by it to this day. But as time goes on, I've learned that strength comes in many shapes and sizes. From Harry Boulder to Mistress Totoro, we've all got something to offer. And not one of us is doing it for personal gain, because we believe that there's more important things than that. Things worth protecting. Which is what being a scion's all about. I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, my friends. I hear this from you. To hear this from you means more than you know. Forgive me, Crystal, could you? Aww. Why do you think the Crystal Braves ended in failure? Well, it's found that ideals was something to be proud of, but ideals alone don't make a crew. For every swab who signed up with good intentions, there was another who was only in it for the coin, the glory, or both. Ours was quite a despair band, and while I will never forgive Ilbert, the fact that we managed to function at all was thanks in large part to his efforts. Just a pity he was doing it for all the wrong reasons, eh? Only takes one bad apple, they say, and the Braves had a barrel of them. Not like the Scions. We might look like a ragtag band of misfits, but deep down, we've got all we've all got that shared sense of purpose. And why? Because Tataru sifted out all the glory hunters before they made before they made it through the door. See, so while our ranks comprise a, di a diverse range of people, each with their own individual strengths, we uh, are all united in purpose. Thank you, my friends. With your permission, I shall make a record of our discussion and refer it to when drafting my recommendations. Until we meet again. For being like a... I feel like this plot is so minor and little, but like it's so meaningful to Alphano. Gives like, um... It's, uh, it gives like a sense of closure, in a sense. Even though it's like a little bit painful to go through, you know? I know, this writing and story overall in this game. <laughs> it's so good, man, it's so good. 
I love this game. I always will. Well, I think I've taken up enough of our colleague's time, and I'm conscious that less affirming testimonies wait. Let us make our way to Gridania and hear what the others have learned. Business Hiring 101. Hey, you know, they were young and stupid. You live and you learn. You live and you learn, right? No one ever really knows what they're doing whenever they first start up something. You kind of just uh, make it up as you go. And then usually it goes to shit, <laughs> as we're seeing here. But, you know, they had the bad experience, they learned from said bad experience, and now they're going back to try to make amends. Which, kind of, sounds like how friendships go sometimes. <laughs> I would definitely recommend trying out the game. Did you know about Final Fantasy XIV's free trial? Critically acclaimed Final Fantasy XIV, the greatest MMORPG, has an insane free trial that includes the whole first expansion of the game. It's crazy. Hours of free content that you could have. And not just any old hours, that's like 30, 40 hours of free content just for you. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Thanks to Tartaru. Thanks to Tartaru's ever-dependable intelligence, we managed to track down a handful of former braves without any great difficulty. Some were forthright, others less so, but we've heard enough to form a picture. I must warn you, Alphano, some of those comments were harsh. I can well imagine, but their opinions are no less vital to my report. I seek the unvarnished truth. Thank you. I will set about adding your friends to my own at once. In the meantime, pray you go on ahead to Little Solace and seek out Elder Frixio. I will join you in on. <clears throat> Endwalker is... They, they announced a date in November. Got about six more months. Wait. We getting there. I know. I always, I, like, I haven't gotten used to it either, the fact that you can fly in these areas still. It's very hard to believe. It doesn't feel real that you can fly in here. It's been so long. Ah, welcome, brave one, and brave, and friends of brave one. How good it is to see walking ones again so soon after the meeting. Should this one perform the customary dance of greeting? Be at ease, it is true that these ones are once delighted in making walking ones dance, but no more. Pond one Kanisa Kanisena said that walking ones would be coming to Little Solace. Imperial ones also invaded Sylphlands and abducted many of these ones, so these ones will be glad to bear wet messages between fighting friendly ones. Oh, that is heartening to hear, Elder. It will require all ones to make to work in unison to stop the Tulofroy. These ones will try very hard, of course, but in matters of war, these ones have little experience. Any advice walking ones can provide would be most welcome. God, I hate how they talk. I forgot about this. Oh, another pretty silver had one, and in quite a hurry, it seems. Alice, you must come quickly. Whatever the matter, Alphano, don't tell me you couldn't read my handwriting. What? No! A twin adder officer accosted me and I was about to set out. Charlian has sent an envoy who is due to arrive in Gridani at any moment. Charlian? Ooh. 
An envoy? Could it be that Kryle has managed to sway the forum? We shall know soon enough, but there is more. The envoy has requested the two of us attend the audience with the Elder Seed Seer. Really? I can see why they might want Scions to be present, but us specifically? Wait, it isn't who I think it is. It is. I could scarce believe it myself, but when I inquired as to the envoy's identity, I was told that it was one Oceanal Livia. Uh... Your father! Well now, the, the fact that a serving member of the Forum had journeyed here would be surprise enough, but him? Quite a glean from this that they are taking the matter seriously. This is gonna be spice. Oh, that may be, but why him not, and not one of the other 98 forum members, unless he volunteered for it? It has been some time since you last saw your father, has it not? Could it be that he is concerned for your well-being? Perhaps, but he has always been reluctant to discuss his work with us. Indeed, and whenever we write to our parents, it is invariably our mother who applies. Nevertheless, I welcome the opportunity to meet with him after so long, even if it's secondary to his true purpose here. Elder Frixio, though that I am to cu cut our visit short, we must return to Gridania. Pray accept my apologies, along with my report. Never mind, there will be time to talk later. This one's... this one won't keep walking once for more urgent matters. Go, go! The audience will be held at the Lotus Stand where the Elder CC still awaits even now. Let us be on our way. Oh, this is spicy. I wasn't expecting to meet the daddy until like Endwalker because obviously he was in the trailer, but he comes in this patch. So we get him earlier than expected. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see family drama? Mm -hmm. I sense a lot of family drama incoming for like the majority of Ed Walker. <laughs> I'm really curious as to where this is gonna go actually. The more I think about it, the more I confuse myself. It's not a phase, Dad. I want to save the world. I wonder, like, how much of a dick he's gonna be. Genuinely curious. Welcome, Warrior of Light. The Elder Seed's here and your friends are waiting within. Mm, here we go. Family Drama 101. The patch. Uh, yo, Leprous, John! Thank you so much for the Tier 1 sub! I really appreciate the support, dude! I hope you enjoy the emotes. Thank you. My friends, I thank you all for coming so swiftly. One of a word of Master Fulchinald's visit took us quite by surprise. When the Alliance granted Mistress Kryle permission to request Charlian's aid, we did not anticipate so prompt a reply, much less that it would be delivered by a member of the Forum. What the nature of the ra that reply may be, we shall soon discover. You think he'll have some daddy charm? I don't think he'll have any daddy charm. Aw, oh, thank you, Leprous. It means a lot. Thank you. There he is. Elder Seeds here. I thank you for granting me this audience. I am Fortuno Levea. Here, in my capacity as representative of the Forum. It is I who should thank you, Master Fortuno, for journeying so far and so swiftly. Would that our first meeting could have been under happier circumstances. Hmm. Oh boy. It has been too long, Father. You look well. Why do I just like feel like this is not gonna go well? I don't know. <laughs> As do you both. 
Amelians will be glad to hear that you are taking care of yourselves. How is Mother? She misses you terribly, of course, but is otherwise a picture of health. Oh, how is he? Circumstances apart, I'm grateful that our meeting has afforded me the chance to be reunited with my children at long last. And I believe I also owe you thanks for the hospitality you showed my father, Louis Wa, during his sojourn in Eorzea. All thanks we owe to him. In the days prior to the seventh umbral calamity, it was your father's tireless efforts which granted us a means to vanquish the primals. Were it not for him, our strength would have been quite spent by the time the Empire arrived. That Gridania still stands is in large part his achievement. He was a great man. He would doubtless have been moved to hear you say so. I must confess, however, that I opposed his decision to intervene. And my position remains unchanged. <laughs> Oh god. There's the spice. To chart the course of history, not to change it. I am familiar with the Charlian stance. It is more than that. It is our way of life. Who we are. But I came here not to deliver a lecture, but the forum's answer to your request. Charlian will under no circumstances intervene in the conflict between Eorzea and the Garlian Empire. Stubborn to the end. Okay. May I ask for what reason the Forum has come to this decision? The final days spell the end not only for Eorzea, but the entire world. The final days. Pray spare me your hyperbole. This conflict is no more than the latest in a series of petty squabbles between yourselves and Garlemald. One in which Charlian will take no part. <laughs> if the final days were truly upon us, we would know. Father, you must ask the Forum to reconsider. You may feel safe on your little island across the waves, but if you imagine the Telophoroi will leave you be, you are mistaken. They mean to kill us all, themselves included. Alphano is right. We have seen what the enemy is capable of, the lengths to which they'll go. This is no time to turn a blind eye. If Eorzea falls, so too will Charlian. So if you truly love our homeland, you will join us, now. Before it's too late! <sighs> I thought you knew better than to raise your voice to your elders. Oh my god! It seems I was wrong. Wrong to ever let you leave, Charlian. I consoled myself that your time abroad would instill in you some hint of restraint, of discipline. Yikes! But I see now that Eorzea has made fools of you both. Have you forgotten why it was that I so vehemently opposed your grandfather's departure? For all his wisdom, his only solution was to go to war. Death, devastation, ruin. Even those who claim victory are scarred for life. What prize could ever justify such sacrifice? <laughs> it is the duty of the learned to avert such tragedy. By fanning the flames of war, you forsake all you once held dear. Damn. Better to fight and fail than wait for the axe to fall. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. It is in your power to save us, refuse and you condemn us all. I like the middle one. It's the most sassy. Ignore your plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. I'm gonna smack that face. That's a bitch slap to the face, that comment. 
<laughs> He's not happy about it. I see your friend shares your misguided ideals. But unlike her, you should know better. Oh. Okay. Alright, bitch. By a Such devastation! Barbaric notions. <laughs> you subvert the teachings of Charlian and place all we have worked for in jeopardy. Alfino, Alizé, as of this moment, you shall no longer bear the name of Leveilleur. Fuck. What? Father. How you choose to live your lives is no longer my concern. <laughs> if you wish to walk the path of ruin, I will not stand in your way. Oh. Master Fulchino, while Charlian may have no intention of intervening in this conflict, we can still part as friends. Will you not stay and speak with us, that we might learn of Charlian's hopes for the morrow? I, I can't believe he just literally disowned them. I, <laughs> I knew this was gonna go bad, but like, that's... <laughs> that's pretty fucking bad. I have said what I came here to say. Any further discussion would be meaningless. Dude, he did take that shit Father, to an 11. Wait! Don't bother, Alize. How can you stand there and watch him walk away? How can you let this happen? I mean, he's a stubborn bitch. You can't really do much to a person like that. <laughs> When somebody's that stubborn and that old, too, they're probably not going to change their ways. They're too boomer for that shit. The older you get, the less likely you, you are to change your mind. Huh. Yeah, it ain't happen. It's worthless. So that's why he came- what he came here to say? That we're all fools for having the temerity to, be to defend ourselves against the Telophoroi. And as for the rest, like it or not, this was, this was the forum's decision. To watch from afar while Eorzea burns. Father was but the messenger, and as he handed down their judgement, I could think of nothing to say that he could possibly sway him. I still can't. To have prolonged the decision would have changed little. For it is not only Master Fortunal who must be persuaded, but the Forum as a whole. Their decision was made ere your father crossed the sea. Nor is it likely to be changed, and so we shall face the Tolafroi without their aid. Forgive me, but if they had no intention of helping us, then why would they go to the trouble of sending an envoy in the first place? Why did they not simply keep their counsel as they ought want to do? I'm getting a call. I have no son and daughter. Quite literally, yeah. That's so extreme. Crystal, has Master, has Master Fushnal arrived yet? Oh god, Kryle. Then it is as I feared. My efforts were in vain. I pleaded our case to, all, to as many forum members as I could, but they flatly refused to discuss the matter. No, that's not exactly true. I should rather say that they ignored every word I said on the subject, without exception. It was almost unnerving. Could it be that they are hiding something from us? That it may- that might go some way to explain Master Fulchnot's performance. When he said that they would know if the final days were truly upon us, I dismissed it as pride. But what if they genuinely believe that they know how the world will end, and simply disagree with us about the circumstances? That I don't know. But something tells me that they are not as unconcerned about the Tolofroi as they claim. If the threat weren't real, why else would they be so standoffish and secretive? I would very much like to delve deeper into this, but I'm afraid I've exhausted every avenue of inquiry. Nor have I fared any better with my other mission, researching Hydaelyn in the Ethereal Sea. I tried enlisting the help of experts in the field, but it appears the Forum has it forbidden anyone from cooperating with us. Obstructed at every turn so it would seem. But don't lose heart just yet. With all the knowledge and acquaintances we have between us, we can still find a way forward. To that end, I would like you all to join me here. When the time is right, of course. 
I am aware that matters in nausea stand on knife edge, but with your permission, I can at least start making the unnecessary arrangements. <laughs> One of two things to take care of here first. I've always wanted to visit Charlian! Yeah! And so you shall, albeit under less, ha less than happy circumstances. It may take a while to secure entry for you all, but I'll let you know when everything is in order. Look after yourselves in the meantime, won't you? Your speculations give me cause to hope, yet if their seeds will bear fruit, I cannot say. What is possible that while it is possible the Charlians hide some secret truth from us, there can be no certainty that its exposure will prompt in them a change of heart. And so for the present, we must needs confront the plight in which we find ourselves. The Forum has refused our request for aid, and it fell falls to us alone to contend with the Talofroi. Even with all of Eorzea standing united, there is no guarantee that we will prevail. What does Charlian intend to do if we fail? Yikes. That's a... a pretty shitty situation. We're going to Charlian. Uh, yeah. I guess, guess we're going to Charlian. Well, not this expansion. I remember grandfather arguing with my father over Charlian's policy of non-intervention. And this time, it was my turn to play the role. Even if my grandfather could not win him over, what chance had I? If words exist that may sway him, I know not what they are. With their knowledge, Charlian could have done so much for the cause. They could have helped us to uncover the secrets of the towers and save the tempered captives within, and yet... Gods! She's so mad. Dude, Alize is so fucking mad. Ooh, shush! <gasps> New emote! Hog. Haley! Happy patch day. Happy patch day. Thank you so much for the eight-month resub. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the emotes. While Charlene's stance is indeed disappointing, we cannot allow ourselves to be distracted from the challenge before us. There is much and more to be done. I shall begin by sharing the forum's response with my counterparts in the Alliance. Meanwhile, I must ask that the Scions... Grave tidings, walking ones, grave, grave tidings... Oh, that's the Sylphs. Calm yourself, my gentle friend. What has occurred? These ones who went to see Feathered Ones send terrible news! Destroying ones have appeared in Nizilfatol! Destroying ones and captured ones and even frightful godly ones! Feathered ones didn't send a chance and were sent flapping and squawking! When did this happen? Is it too late to help them? Too late, yes, but much too late! But luckily, destroying ones were only passing through and continued on west. Feathered ones who did not fight were left unharmed. West, that would be Coerthus. Yikes. My lady, the Ishgardians report that the Talafaroi have emerged from the eastern highlands of Coerthus and are marching at speed. Though their purpose has yet to be determined, the Cartanu Flats would seem that their most, most likely destination. Lord Eimerick has already dispatched his for forces and requests our immediate support. Tell him he shall have it. The time is come for the Grand Company of Eorzea to prove its worth. Well, it may happen as a mercy that we do not have to time to stew upon our misfortunes. Come, my friends, let us make haste to Cartanu. Everything is escalating so fast. Oh, wait! This one almost forgot! Destroying ones were said to be led by cackling robed one. This one must see all walking ones know. Farewell. Bye, Sylphs. I'm sorry. And Daniel. Who else? It was only a matter of time before that grinning maniac showed himself again. I shall have an airship ready for you, to, it, ready to bear you to Cartanu. Pray see that your preparations and report to the landing with all haste. At once, my lady, let us be away. Dude, this patch is starting off, it started off like all chill, you know, all wholesome. Had our great meeting, everything was going great. It was, you know, 
wholesome, and it just went downhill so fast. And it's gonna stay downhill probably until expansion. Oof. This is, uh... Rough. Then the Fire Nation attacked. Dude! <laughs> the escalation! Knows no bounds! I think there's probably something behind that, to criticize Louis Wall like that. Because, yeah, otherwise the Seventh Honorable Calamity would have happened, right? So it makes me feel like there's more something to that. I don't know. Yeah, six months of wait. Oh, God. Yikes. But Team Fordola here has come all the way to Gridania to find us. I've explained the situation, but she insists her business is urgent. Aye, and it'd be, it'll be over soon if you shut up and come with me. Yay, Fordola! Woo! Still don't like her. You already requested off work, friend Walker? Hell yeah. Yeah, me too. We got some happiness out of this. Oh, look at Elfin. Oh, I can't tell you how good it is to see you. Elfin. Mm. Uh oh. It arrived a lot sooner than expected, eh? The day I craned my neck up at you. Only because you're sitting down. Unless... <gasps> oh. Afraid so. The Chirurgeons <gasps> say I may never walk again. But he's not dead. Come on, Alfino, it could be worse. Besides, I didn't come here to dampen the mood. Quite the opposite. Oh. All I've ever wanted was to fight for a cause I believe in. Oh. But my fighting days are over. So I want you to fight in my stead. Be the hero I can't. I am no hero. That's what they all say, though. No one ever calls themselves a hero. Even the ones who eat primals for breakfast. It's for others to decide. Look, Alfino. You already are a hero. To me and countless others. We see you doing your damnedest to protect us all. And you're not alone, are you? <laughs> so... There are people who believe in you. Just as you believe in them. Some things may have changed, but the adventure isn't over yet. at stake and how many people are depending on you but I believe in you believe that you'll see it through that's why I'm entrusting my dreams to you like Arbor and Owley once entrusted their dreams to me
There was a time when I would have borne the weight of such expectations without a second thought. But now, I know just how heavy that burden can be. To tell the truth, I am beginning to wonder if I chose the right path. Sacrifices will inevitably be made for the sake of the ideals I uphold. Maybe I am not the person I thought I was, the person you think I am. I wouldn't presume to tell you, but I will say this. In spite of everything, you've come this far. The road ahead might not always be clear, but you've never been one to give up or take the easy way out. And everything you do, you do for others. For a brighter future. I'm proud to call you my friend. Well, I've said my piece, so I'll let you go. I know you've got more important things to be doing. Just... Give what I've said some thought, alright? <laughs> Damn, these past two patches have not been kind to Alphano in terms of feelings. Holy shit. <laughs> I shall, my friend. And we will meet again soon, I promise. First dealing with the Crystal Braves, and then Arnvald, and then getting disowned by his Nothing dad. Nothing for me to do but wave and smile. Oh. You've got a pretty narrow view of what it means to be a hero, do you know that? You think they're all forged in the fires of battle? That it's all about being brave and killing villains? Alphano and the others will carry on their fight. But theirs isn't the only one. There are other ways you can make a difference. If you stop feeling sorry for yourself and put your bloody mind to it. There's not much chance of me living the quiet life with you around, is there? If you're content to twiddle your thumbs thinking of what might have been, that's your lookout. But I reckon you've got some fight left in you. And I reckon you might be right. If there's a way I can still help my friends, I'll bloody well find it. Aww. All right, Fordola may have gotten some points there, but still, don't like her. <laughs> but she got some points. <laughs> I don't know what those points exactly do. They're definitely dating. I don't know. I don't see it. I'm glad he survived. Yeah, I didn't think he died in the first place. I just feel bad for Alphino. Like, poor boy is dealing with so much Bullshit. Oh, an instance? Oh. Didn't quite expect an instance. Uh, what job should I go on? Ninja? We'll go ninja. You can tell me later what that was all about, but judging by the set of Alphano's jaw, it appears to have done him some good. Thancred and the others have already left the Rising Stones, and according to the communication officer, Malja and Kobold forces are also bound for Kosinu as we speak. They mean to keep the promise they made in Alamigo, and we must do the same by saving as many of the tempered kin as possible. Anyway, the ship is the airship is ready to depart. We should get going. Upon joining the Battle of Cartoonus, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to participate.
The in if you uh, enter battles associated with other quests or log out from the game, this progress will be lost. All right, hopefully we don't get 90 k No man. My fellow scions. As I am sure you will have heard, we can expect no help from Charlie, nor are we any closer to discerning the Telophoroi's grand design. Basically, we're fucked. <laughs> and now, our adversary moves against us in unprecedented numbers, compelling us to answer in kind. The outlook, in short, is bleak. Yet though our foes are many, and we but few, we may still tip the balance in Eorzea's favor. Of course. We will do what we always do. Deal with the ones our allies can't. A less than daunting prospect, judging by your expression. Could it be that you've dispelled your lingering doubts, Alphino? E. Smile. Oh, I doubt I ever will. But as my friends have kindly reminded me, I have come this far, and that must count for something. God be good, Alphino. That's what we've been trying to tell you all along. <laughs> for one so bright, you can be remarkably dim at times. There is such a thing as overthinking, you know. Yeah. I'm the queen of overthinking, I get it. Might I suggest that we continue this conversation after the battle? It would appear that Telophoroi have already arrived. I'll do what I can to cure the Tempered, but they'll have to be incapacitated first. Have care, my friends, for none can say wherefore our foe did choose this fateful field to be our battleground. Whatever may transpire, pray grant him not the pleasure of deterring you. Oh, here we go. God, my loading times are so bad. They're getting worse and worse. Oh, man. Listen well, friends. The Tlopoi are sweeping across Cartanu. As for the Asian, he was briefly sighted above the battlefield, but has since vanished. He likely intends to watch events from up there. Thus far, the movements of the Lunar Primals have proven difficult to predict. Even when poised to ambush our troops, they insta- I can't read that fast! Whatever the Telephoroi's plan may be, the Primals are our primary targets. Blech. They will not elude the silence for long. Prepare yourself! Let's give it our all! Oh god. Oh god, wait. I, I genuinely don't know what to do. Just a bunch of AoE, I guess. Oh god, oh god, oh god. No, 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 no! Oh, no, 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 no. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons because I'm not used to doing AoE on Ninja. I haven't done AoE moves on Ninja in a very long time. Trying 
so hard to hit all these targets. I guess I could do, um... Oh no! Oh, come on! Fuck this game. This way. Okay, I'm going this way. Follow Astinian. Oh god. I do not see any primal. Something's not right. Oh god. What's gonna happen? Hello. Hello, friends. Field map. As the signs spread out across the field, Ali saying Graha take the fight to the Telophoroi. This is cool. We get to see how everybody's split up and what's going on. What's Crimson Savior? Oh, AoE. Okay. <gasps> yes! Oh. Uh, I don't have a gauge or anything. This is weird. How does this work? You don't have like a red mage gauge, so I'm like, I'm just genuinely confused. I should be doing the AOE or whatever. There we go. I should probably heal Graha. It's kind of dying. Don't die, buddy. Made without the resource management. It's really awkward. I don't know how this works. Like, I don't know if I should be doing the melee. Oh, oh, the melee combo is on cooldown. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier. Should I be healing myself? I just don't know if I should be healing myself in Graha or not. He has fucking clemency. Yeah, oh, there he goes. He just clemenced himself. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about you anymore. I was in my melee combo, bitch! This is awesome. It seems we've earned a moment's respite. Yee! Time to cure the tempered. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is so cool. Yeah, he did switch jobs. Look, he's on healer now. He does what he wants.
Yes, it is a flying pig. Do you see that? The glyph, yes. How worried should we be? Very worried. We're gonna die. Everybody's gonna die on this battlefield right now. Listen well and judge for yourself. Though I can see no ethereal currents, I had not thoroughly examined that they f that, th that those that flow through the heart of Kartanu. But now that I am here, things have become clear. The flats conceal an etheric confluence like like to the pillars of the Azim Steppe, but greater in scale, far greater. The glyphs that Fan Daniel has conjured reach its in, into its very midst, and I believe I know their purpose. Should the lunar primals destroy them, it would spark a chain reaction with the potential to obliterate the confluence entirely. The resultant disruption to the flow of ether would sow chaos among the, among the elements, prompting earthquakes, floods, and tempests large enough to lay waste to them. That he would go so far cometh as little surprise. We must needs protect the confluence at all costs. Alright, who are we roleplaying here? Thancred? We've played Thancred a lot of times. <gasps> oh, we're Yuri Anjay! Okay, Benefic. Malefic. Go to Grounds Combo. Destiny drawn? Wait, this is like just drawing a card. Aspected Helios. Creates a fixed center around the caster. So this is like collective unconscious? That's collective unconscious. So scroll combo. Leave everything to fate as you draw a card from your divining deck. Restores 20% of maximum MP. The scroll damage dealt is increased. Reduced cast time? Wait, what? Wow. Yourself and all nearby party members. Whoa. Excuse the following. Okay, Destiny Drawn. That's a card. And then Lord of the Crowns uh, deals out that aspect of frequency of 270. Okay, I think I understand. Lunar Odin, though! Holy shit! Oh god! Oh, this is cool. Alright, well. We don't have a dot or anything, so I guess we just go. Wait, you don't give the cards. Okay. Wait, I can't target. Oh god, I'm trying to target. I shall protect thee. Oh, this is really cool. So Lord of Crowns does damage. The scroll is AoE. It's not like a card I need to put on somebody specifically. I see. My turn. May the twelve guide you. Holy shit. So that does damage, and this card does AoE. Oh, 
Oh wait, should I be healing this? I just realized that. I think I should be healing it. I'm trying, I'm trying to free Thancred. This music is so good. It feels like so, so, so epic. Holy shit. Ah, targeting is hard. Okay. Ultimate oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, we gotta kill him, we gotta kill him, we gotta kill him, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, he's dying pretty quick. Okay, we're good. I was a little worried. That was really cool. That was awesome. So we fought Lunar Odin. Oh, Ravana! This is so cool. I love this instance. This is a really, really cool instance. So are we going to be Grahatia? Sorry, I just got really excited. <laughs> We get to be Graha! Okay, so we're white mage, Grahatia. I think. Wait, no! Oh my god, we're not a white mage, we're a black mage slash white mage. Okay, so we have our Dot Thunder, Blizzard, and Fire combo, Medica 2, Rake. Okay. So we're like black mage, white mage. What's the combo of a black mage and a white mage? I don't know. Something. Holy shit. Ow! Everything hurts. Why am I tanking? Also. up these. Oh god. Oh yet. Yeah. Oh god failed. I needed to be a lot faster. I was really really slow. Holy shit. Ugh. It's hard being the a DPS so you're a black mage and a white mage and you're also tanking at the same time. Dude, Graha got it tough. That's tough, man. Oh, I'm sorry, were you supposed to be the tank healer and the DPS all in one? 
<laughs> Bitch, I might be. And it's hard. Oh my god, the loading screen of death. Wait, I have to go from the very beginning. I thought they said that if, if you fail one of them, you just go back. Wait, oh, okay. From midway. Oh, okay, there we go. I was like, I shouldn't have to start from the very beginning. That's not what they said. Yeah, with every patch that comes out, my loading time gets worse and worse and worse. And they said it got better. But the thing is, my PC is shit. Wait, I have to do Odin again? Oh my god, that actually sucks. Oh, we don't just start on Ravana. Wait, do we? Oh. Might as well just start from the beginning at that point. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Okay, so, okay, 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 never mind. Here we go! Put that dot. Um, works like well. Uh, it's an MMORPG. Yes. There is a lot of free content, yeah. My mana. My mana. <laughs> Honestly, the thing is, whenever you get into MMORPGs and you pay monthly for it, it sounds really cringe and stupid when you're, like, getting into it and you're like, why the fuck would I pay monthly for a game? But then you start playing them and then you very quickly realize that it is well worth your money. Like, there is at no point in time, I've been paying this for this game for four years now, monthly. At no point in time do I ever feel like my money is not well uh, spent. Like, you get... I get all the content I could ever ask for. It's better than paying for a $60 brand new game every month. It's actually way better. Wait, where's my dot? But yeah, I've never felt like I never got my money's worth putting into this game monthly. There is a fuck ton of content. I didn't see where he put up the... Oh, God. I can't! I can only kill, like, one at a time! Oh, the break stops it! Oh! Got it. That's what break is for. Ah! Did I die? I hope I didn't fuck that up. Okay, I, I took too late to realize. more primals do I gotta deal with? <laughs> That's a very, very lengthy instance, but I really like it a lot.
At the self same moment, you can stand shoulder to shoulder with Alphano and Alize, resolved to lay Lunar Ifrit low. Lunar Ifrit. Gotta get our revenge for what he did to our involved! Let's go! What I like about Ravana is that it's an original primal, which there isn't a lot of original primals in this game, because they're all references to older Final Fantasy, but, but like, Ravana's er an original design and concept, and I really like that. I think they did really well for that. I have to remember my ninja opener. Opener, that's crazy. Here, I'll give the butt of the boss to Stinian, even though I don't know if he cares about positionals. I don't think he does. Put trick on the boss. I lost sweet on. I didn't want to put trick on a nail. We must fight on. I lost Kasatsu and everything. What the fuck? No, I'm gonna lose my buff too. Oh god, oh god, oh god, no! <laughs> okay, we're good, we're good. No, please. Wait, Astinian, you're up time! Get over here! I feel bad, I just ruined Astinian's up time! Oh, sorry, buddy. Love Susano. Susano, I like I like Susano because he's not he's that one primal that's not oh god. I can't oh god, these things aren't gonna die. Oh my god, Estinian! What are you gonna do? Holy shit. He's Bro, what? Are you for real? Holy shit, that was so cool! I will not be outdone. Estinian got so much fucking power. Oh, I should go in the sacred soil. Oh god, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. God, he keeps smashing. 
Poor Alphino, that healing check for him. Oh my god, that was really, really, really cool. Whatever Astinian just did. I want that. Except that's a Needhog thing, so we're not gonna get that. That sucks. That was really fucking cool. <laughs> Uh-oh. And thus another plan went up in smoke. I am beginning to see why Lord Xenos thinks so highly of you. Not that this changes anything, you understand. You have merely earned yourself a stay of execution. How fair the tempered. We've treated as many as we can, but some were beyond help. Sir Baymerick, I see you. <laughs> brethren could be saved we are grateful for those whose minds have been restored you could do no more and that is enough so please hold your heads high Kind words. They mean a lot. A victory at great cost, but a victory nonetheless. We must stay strong and press on. Isn't that right? To the very end. To the very end.
Ooh, this is... Okay. That's really creepy. Ominous. The timing. The ominous stare as we all look at the moon. We going there, let's go! Oh, this is a good transition. That's it? That's it, man. That's a good transition to the expansion. Really, really good. You have this big epic battle and then you all look to the moon because that's where you're going next. Ah! Oh man, that's so, that gives me so many feelings. Shadowbringers is officially done. Oh, the feels, the feels, the feels. This expansion was so good. Wow. Since 2.0, it's been for a while, yeah. Really, really long. Lena's voice actress was so fucking good. Props. Holy crap. That was god tier. Runar! First night, uh, back on the first, everyone looks toward the night sky. Yeah! Similar. I can't believe Shadowbringers is over. This shit was so good. I love this expansion. Uh, yeah, this art is really good too. Man, I'm not. I'm like getting all nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, we have six months to wait now. Six months of waiting for the expansion at this point. <laughs> Lena's VA would be at the American Fan Fest. She really stood out a lot. Lena's voice actress, I feel like, stood out the oh, not the most, but like her like top voice acting in this expansion. Lena's like very high up there for me. Did really good. really fun. I would definitely, like, if you can play Final Fantasy XIV and you have, uh, you have a soul left inside of you to sell, <laughs> then I would definitely recommend selling your soul to this game. <laughs> really good. The story is just so good. Like, if you can... Oh, and the music. Like, just listen to this fucking music. It's so good. Come on. Play this game, please. <laughs> the story is so good. I know it's like an MMORPG, but if you can just play this game as a solo player, just to go through the storyline, you'll be forced to play with online players, like it's part of the game, but it's still, it's still worth it. This game is so good. It is. I keep telling people like it's an RPG. I still am I'm trying to convince my brother to play Final Fantasy XIV. Like, you don't have to spend years playing it if you don't like the MMO aspect of it, but it's still an RPG. Still a damn good RPG that I would recommend to people.
Yeah. I I don't think I could ever play another MMO. It depends on what comes out in the future, but you know, Final Fantasy XIV is the only and first MMO I've ever played. I can't imagine playing another game, honestly. Another MMO. I feel like I would just be disappointed by anything else I try. <laughs> and plus, like, I have I have so much in this game to do. Like, I've been playing for four years, and I still have so much left to do. Like, I have endless content still. The chives! Uh, do the chives! music. Sorry. Stand oh, it's so beautiful. I have t <laughs> I have goosebumps. I gotta love this. It is never too late to get into Final Fantasy XIV. Actually, I would say getting into it now is probably one of the best times to get into this game. The next expansion is really hype and you have six months to catch up. You have six months until the next expansion comes out. So if you get into it now, you got six long months to catch up to everything. And that's plenty of time. You got a lot of time to catch up if you would like to get into it now. It, this, like, Final Fantasy XIV is only going to get bigger. It's not a dying MMO, and it is absolutely not dying any time in the next five years. I can guarantee you that. It's going, going to go strong for a very long time. So if you, like, have the mindset of, like, oh, I don't want to get into a dying MMO, it's not dying for a very long time. If anything, the numbers, the, t the statistics, they just keep showing that this MMO keeps on growing a lot. It's not going downhill anytime soon. <laughs> Amanda's vocals are really good. They are. They really are. <laughs> I'm getting so sentimental. I l uh. Sorry, I just really loved this whole expansion. This was like my first whole expansion I sat through because I joined Final Fantasy XIV at the end of Stormblood expansion. I, oh no, not at the end of Stormblood expansion, at the beginning. I joined in at five or a 3.4.1 patch. Wait, Stormblood... Stormblood is... Five, three, wait, what number? <laughs> is four, 4.1. That's what it was, 4.1 is whenever I joined this game. It was the end of the Delta Escape tier I joined in. And been playing it ever since. So Shadowbringers was like my first experience, like from beginning to end of the expansion since I was a little bit late on Stormblood. But yeah. Being able to sit through an entire expansion has been... Now I'm like 10 times more emotional. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's a, that's a really big strong point of Final Fantasy XIV as a community and especially the community team like the team that runs the that runs all the forums for the community 
Final Fantasy XIV is very, very, very in touch with their community, and it's very heartwarming. Like, they listen to us all the time. The devs are very transparent about nearly everything. It's nice to feel that connection to the dev team, because whenever you play this game, you really feel like you're listened to constantly. They take player feedback all the time. And not only that, I think the biggest thing is, like I said, the transparency. They're just very open about like what they're working on. Like, oh, we heard you with your complaints with this specific thing, we're working on it. They are so in touch with everything, it's incredible. It makes you feel like you're, care you're cared for. It makes you like, it gives you more of a sense of caring about the game and the world in general. Yeah, they do very well at responding to the communities. Sometimes I even think it's like a little bit too much. I, I often think that they listen to the community's complaints too much. But generally it's not that bad for the most part. <laughs> Sometimes I would rather them not listen to the community complaints because they're a bit, eh. Sometimes the community complains about the stupidest shit that they don't need to worry about. I'd rather them make content for the game instead of worrying too much about the community's whines. But uh, it's still good that they do that, though. You're hyped for Final Fantasy 16. Wait, it's not going to be on PC. I thought they said it was a PS5 exclusive. Or no, I don't know what they said. I forget. But like, I am excited for Final Fantasy 16. Does make sure that we're happy with the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really nice. I will say that I'm I'm definitely desperate for a new game, for sure. As much as I love Final Fantasy VII, I'm not that hyped about the remake anymore. I, I will be hyped about it and I'll still play it, but I really like new stories. I'm one of those boomers that's like, just play the original Final Fantasy VII. The remake is great and all, but like, uh I'd rather have a new game than have a bunch of remakes. So I am really excited for Final Fantasy 16, needless to say. I'm very excited. I'm just excited that Yoshi's Yoshi and Soken, the great team, is working on it, so. It's like I have I've a lot of faith for 16. <laughs> Final Fantasy 16, Game of Thrones. I was upset with myself that I watched the 16 trailer that they released last year, uh, but I'm no longer gonna watch any more trailers on it. Because now I have like my new philosophy in life that like if I know I'm gonna buy a game and I'm gonna play a game, Watching the trailer is only going to ruin my experience rather than enhance my hype. <laughs> I've come to that realization <laughs> nowadays. So no more trailers for me. I already know I'm going to play the game. It's not like it's worth my time to watch more trailers and stuff. You know, my spell so you watch all the all the trailers. I mean, that's fine. Everybody is different. For me, I found that like the more trailers that I watch, the the more it takes away from my experience whenever I do play the game myself. But everybody's gonna be different. That's just how I am. I have I have discovered this only in the past like two years. <laughs> it's a rather new thing for me that I realized that like, oh yeah, because I saw this in the trailer, like, I don't know, it's it takes away from my experience. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it just does. <laughs> and they come out with so many trailers. For FF7 Remake, I could not believe how many trailers they kept coming out for that game. I felt like I saw the whole game pretty much. <laughs> how many trailers were released for that? At least like eight, nine, ten maybe? They had so many. <laughs> like, brah.
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different, right? I don't mind sitting through all these credits, it's nice. Oh, we're getting to the end! Look, it's the- it's the dick daddy. That sounds really bad. Wait, I meant like that he's a dick, not like a dick dad. <laughs> Fuck. How do I say that? <laughs> he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dick. We don't like him. <laughs> no. God, no, he is not a no, God, no, no. Oh god. Uh. <laughs> I hate this so much. <laughs> You said that he didn't have a daddy vibe and here you are no! <laughs> you know what I meant! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hate it here. You guys are bullies. started playing 15. I know a lot of people love or hate 15. I personally actually really love 15. Of course it was like flawed, but uh, what I always tell people is that like my experience of 15 is that if the pros of the game outweigh the cons of the game, I still consider it really good. Like there are definitely flaws with that game. It's far from perfect, but I think that it did a lot of things better than it did a lot of things bad. So I really enjoyed. So like, for me, the bad points of 15 weren't enough for me to taint my experience. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The, uh, yeah, they did improve a lot a lot of it with like the Royal Edition. I do agree, but eh. Even at launch, I really enjoyed it. Oh my god, not the Dick Daddy Cliffs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Spare me. Do I deserve this? It's funny how he was like, your mom said hi, and then two minutes later, you're disowned. So what's gonna be Alize's and Alphanode's last name? If they got disowned, they get to make up their own name. Oh, so the Warrior of Light will just adopt them. And uh, my last name will be their last name, which means their last name will be Comms, please. <laughs> please give me your comms. Their surname will not be Dick Daddy. Oh my god. <laughs> Please. <laughs> What's next? Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know if there's like an ending cutscene after these credits. I imagine there probably is and you could easily skip this, but I'm enjoying my moment of respite right now. <laughs> we'll see if there's like an ending cutscene. I don't think there's gonna be. But I don't know. It's been two hours. I actually considered switching this to a Miitopia stream. I still might. Do we want to switch to Miitopia? Or just end stream early and do Miitopia tomorrow? Because I am playing Miitopia on Wednesday and Friday this week. I'm debating my life. I would have to plug in my, um, because my, my capture card is plugged into my PS5 and not my Switch right now. <laughs> Hold on. Plugged in my switch. No, 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 we're not gonna meet the lady in white. She's gonna be in the expansion. The masked question mark lady. New character something something. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard a lot of people that, like talk up Metopia <laughs> from the 3DS. I'm glad that they did bring it to the Switch as well. <clears throat> We're supposed to be at the lake. Wait, which lake? What do you mean? All right, I'm gonna do a ping on Discord. I will switch to Metopia, so I'll let, I'll let everybody know. Like at Mordona? Uh. Yeah, no, you lost me there. <laughs> I have no idea. I keep thinking of like where the direction of the game is gonna go for Endwalker. I just have so many potential thoughts. The whole Charlian thing is gonna be interesting. You know what I think is gonna happen with uh, the dad? I already forgot his name. Asshole Dick Daddy. <laughs> Dick Daddy, apparently. Um, I think that he will turn around. I think that we'll probably convince him by, by the end of the expansion, but it'll be one of those like really sad moments where he changes his mind at the end of it and he'll end up helping us at the end of the expansion. And then he dies. Why do I have a feeling that's gonna happen? He's gonna be like, maybe my father and my son and daughter will write. Maybe I shouldn't have been a stubborn bitch in his dying words, and then he goes, Bleh. then he dies. <laughs> Something like that. Soaking, yeah. God, we all cried. Everybody cried over Soaking at the end of FanFest. 
Oh, I don't want to bring it up because I don't want to cry on stream by thinking about that. That was so heartwarming. You want to see the twins, mom? I'm very eager to see, because I don't think we've ever seen a picture of her at all, right? Because we at least knew about the dad prior, but I don't think we've ever seen their mom, right? She's probably not as much of a bitch, though, as Dick Daddy. Yeah, the thing is, we knew about the dad from the compendium. We've known about him for years, but we didn't know- I, don't, I still don't think we know anything about their mom. I don't know if we will see their mom or not. I- I don't know if we will. I mean, maybe. Maybe we will see them. I mean, see the mom. Because she would be in Charlia too. Wondering. <gasps> Manager of tabletop games? I want that job. Man, these credits. Woo! I could have skipped this a long time ago. I don't know if there's an FF tabletop. That's news to me. But there's a position for it, apparently. Network Administrator. Hey, Eidos Montreal! My friend works there. I don't think he works for the 14 specifically though, but I do have a friend that works at the Montreal uh, Square office. Oh, the music! Christopher Koji Fox, let's go! Mishikawa, let's go! Kings and queens of the expansion right there. Sounds like the best job it does. <laughs> all the voice actor management, all those beautiful companies, agencies. Isn't there like a Final Fantasy XIV D and D book or something that somebody made? Who? It was a. I think it was Corey that told me about it. He sent me the link for it, and it looked really fucking cool. We're at the third party contract, so surely we have to be toward the end of these credits now, right? <laughs> oh my god. I feel like I would skip it, but at this point, I am like so far into these credits that I am dedicated to finishing. We've come so far. I'm absolutely finishing this. <laughs> I can't give up. I don't want to skip. No. <laughs> Yeah, there is definitely a homebrew that exists. I wish I could find it. It's like buried deep in my DMs. I also haven't talked to Cory in a while, but I know that he had it. He was like really enthusiastic and then I never did a, like any Final Fantasy XIV D&D campaign after he sent me the book. Yeah, exactly. We will appreciate all these people's hard work. There's so many people! Look at all these fucking people and their hard work in Final Fantasy XIV. All those beautiful 3D artists. We love them. You love to see it. <laughs> I 
You know, it's gonna be a breath of fresh air to play Miitopia after this. I think I've officially decided at this point to play Miitopia. But we gotta respect the credits first. Dick Daddy definitely won't stay a Dick Daddy for our, the whole expansion, surely. And I also think that in regards to the mom, I, I feel like she doesn't believe in the Charlian ways either. I don't think that she's on, in the same boat as Dick Daddy. For some reason, I just don't think that they're on the same page. If he's Dick Daddy, is the mom gonna be Mad Mommy? Oh my god. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> <laughs> no. She's gonna be a uh, normal, non-edgy mommy. Maybe. Yeah, these credits, they went a lot longer than I thought, but like, yo, we're here to respect. It's because they have to go through all of the different countries' uh, contributions, too. Milf Elf, oh god. Oh god, what if we do- what if we do meet her? And... She t actually turns out to be a MILF. This hot babe that everyone just thirsts over. <laughs> cursed! <laughs> actually, that wouldn't be cursed! I feel like we need another girl like that in the game, though. I feel like we haven't had that in quite a lot, in quite a long time. You suspect that Alfie learns the sage job from her? Maybe. Maybe it's handed down from the generations of the family. I don't know. Make it shit up. But yeah, that'd be kind of cool if, like, uh, uh, the, the mom was a sage. And then they go to... They go to Charlian in the next expansion, and then he learns the ways of the sage through the mom. That'd be cute. Lady Dimitri, how do you even say Lady Dimitriescu? I don't know. I don't play a Resident Evil. <laughs> but no, I don't think she's gonna end up being like that. And not at all, actually. Side? What does side even mean? What does this mean? Uh. So would the, where would the Reaper job come from, though? Well, I guess Xenos is gonna be... the new Reaper. Xenos merely invented the job. No, he definitely didn't invent it. <gasps> the primals! Are we at the end? Guys, I think we made it. Oh, Axis font. Oh, that's the end! Yo, 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 yo! We made it. We actually watched the full thing. Guest creators? Okay, Yoko Taro. Yeah. Anomura. Uh, uh, come on, that's gotta be it. Special thanks. Okay, usually this is like the very end. 
Oh, Nabuo! Oh, they put him in there. He should be. And the Evans! There's a lot of good names in here. Yeah, they put near a lot of the near team in here because they all worked on the uh, the alliance raid since it was based on near. This is only credits part one. Usually the special thanks goes at the very end. So like, this, this has to be it, right? And all, see look, the last people they thank are all the Final Fantasy XIV players. Wait, why are we going into production managers? But it should end with like, thank you to all the Final Fantasy XIV players. What? It's still going. That was it! Are you kidding me? Look, okay, Naoki Yoshida. Okay, okay, that's gotta be it. Yoshida. Produced by Square, like these are all finishing touches, right? You can't possibly put anything after produced by Square Enix. I think we made it. <laughs> <laughs> that was not worth it. <laughs> Alright, let's finish this fucking expansion. Oh! We get to finish by talking to Sir Baymerick. The game knows exactly what I want. At the close of the battle, when the clouds parted and the moon shone down on us all, I cannot well explain express how I felt. Somehow it seems more of a beginning than an end. The temper that we were able to treat will be taken to the city-states for observation. As soon as the Alliance is satisfied that they have fully recovered, they will be free to return home. Astinian is so tall. <laughs> Half of his fucking height. Many though the enemy were, their numbers consisted largely of tempered beastmen were with a few lunar primals to keep things interesting. The Garleans themselves ventured little and lost less. It has ever been the Empire's way to have others fight their battles, but even they would blush at the Telephroy's use of tempered slaves. Tall men. The Cotidou Flats seem fated to play a prominent role in the history of the realm, do they not? I wonder, might the abundance of ether that floweth through the region have led the Allegans to a tomb Omega there? Oh, that's interesting. Throughout the battle, I could not shake the feeling that all present were performing for the amusement of Fan Daniel. Nor did his blith reaction to this latest defeat give me cause to think otherwise. I could only conclude that such failures are a little consequence to his broader scheme, wherever, whatever it may be. I will recommend that the Alliance keep a close watch over Cartanu. The Tlothroi may have been failed at their attempt to destroy the confluence this time, but there is not to stop them trying again. It was decent of Lord Einrich to bear us hope aboard his airship, bear us home aboard his airship. The gods only know how we would have squeezed this many people onto the Bonanza. <laughs> Sir Baymerick. I trust you all enjoyed a comfortable flight aboard the Pride of the Ashgardian fleet. Lest you worry, the Bonanza has been towed to a nearby location to, to be retrieved at your convenience. <laughs> Imerick has a big chip. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You've thought of everything, Lord Imerick, and may I say how much I appreciated the hospitality you afforded us on your way home. Think nothing of it, our destination lay in the same direction and it afforded me the opportunity to learn how much my errant friend has been since last he took his leave. Okay, I was waiting for this interaction between Imerick and Asinian because I feel like it's gonna be awkward. It would seem you have finally found a place to settle down. Humph, I merely grew weary of wandering the Far East. <laughs> Asinian does not want to talk to his ex-boyfriend, Imerick. <laughs> he wants nothing to do with him. 
Estinian be looking away from my mirror like ba -ba 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 -ba. Returning to more serious matters, while the Telephroi have been driven from Kartu, it's his like the bulk of their forces yet remain. On the evidence of the Grand Company of Eorzea's first joint military operation, however, I am confident that we have the potential to meet such threats head-on, even without the aid of you and yours. As such, while our forces keep the Telephroi at bay, I would ask that you apply your talents to the task of neutralizing the towers. A sensible divert division of labor. While the towers remain, so too will the threat of the lunar primals. And given our expertise at the field of aetherology, we are better qualified to find the solution. That we are, especially should it happen to lie beyond the Alliance's dominion. There is a time and place for formal investigations, of course, but certain secrets are wont to hide where other, where only enterprising individuals may venture. I cannot agree more. There are none, uh, none better suited to this task, nor upon, nor any upon whom I would rather rely. Aww. On behalf of the Alliance, they, I thank you. We look forward to receiving any information you are able to recover. And with that, I must take my leave. Should you need have need of assistance, pray do not hesitate to ask. Fare you well, my friends. Estinia, <laughs> Amrick. Bro, just talk it out, hug it out. No. I want I want them to get back together. I confess I had hoped to be able to study the towers more closely, vital as they plainly are to the Telephroy's plans. We cannot we can discern that ultimate function. We would be one step closer to understanding our enemy's grand scheme. Should we succeed in neutralizing them, of course, it is all but certain that the Telephroy would mount an all-out invasion. And then it will begin. The one who awaits at the heart of the chaos will come for us, for you. Yet in the end, our true nemesis may be the calamity to end all calamities, the final days themselves. Yes, all right, Alphano. We need a plan, not importance. As Thancred so eloquently pointed out, we are in, in position to seek information from all manner of places, not least. Charlian. According to Kryl, the forum had been more secretive than ever of late. While this may be related to the appearance of the Telophoroi, that remains a matter of speculation. But one thing is clear, the forum is determined to keep us from discovering the truth. Master Fortunald's performance at the Lotus Stand was enough to convince me of that. The matter beareth further investigation, I do heartily concur. Nor can I think of a more promising place to look for the answers we seek on the matter of the towers. Charlian hath ever been the wellspring of ethereological knowledge. I care not where we go, here or there, my lance will be ready. Thanks, Estinian. And what of you might we be persuaded to join us? Uh, if it means I can have a word with Fortunalt, an island of bookworms and bureaucrats, have we no other choice? That kind of does sound miserable when you put it like that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would like- I would like to have a few words with Dick Daddy. Only after I do. Oh, <laughs> Alice is gonna lay it in. If he and his friends in the forum think we'll leave them alone if they ignore us, they're in for a shock. It appears we are in agreement, but we have but to wait for Kryle to secure the necessary per permissions. In the meantime, there is a matter I would investigate. Doesn't involve tall structures. By strange coincidence, it does. At present, I have only a creeping suspicion, but with your help, I will soon find out whether my fears are warranted. Hmm. Dun dun da! And now we get the shush emote. Ending cutscene. Meanwhile, in the Garleen capital, we gotta end it on Xenos, right? Mm! Look at that Reaper job. Alright, bitch. Ooh, he be looking good! I hate it, because I hate this guy. <laughs> Those Aorzeans certainly are a stubborn bunch, though I suppose you knew that already.
He did get the new swag. Look at that. Drip, My plan though. to redirect the ether from Carton. I like the design. I still hate Xenos. Factory conclusion. As a character, I want him gone. In many respects, an abject failure. Which does, of course, raise the question of where we are going to procure the requisite amount. The obvious solution would be to draw on resources a little closer to home, though that would require our dreamer to dream a trifle more deeply. So be it. The dreamer will not complain. Then let us begin the preparations at once. With the gateway of the gods complete, all that remains is to gather the necessary ether, and our prize shall be within reach. The time has come to fulfill your heart's desire. My desire! To relieve those wretched creatures of their meaningless existence! While I await you, I shall drink a sea of souls and gorge myself upon the darkened moon. Then you shall come to me, all roiling rage and rancor. And the stars shall bear witness to our final contest. Final contest, he says. No, we're gonna fight him like 5,000 more times, because this fuck never dies. He says final. It's definitely not the final. Pressing X to doubt. As I thought, the ethereal currents have been disturbed here, too. It was the same in Thanalan. Make that every location we surveyed. And the strength of each current has diminished dramatically, far more than could be attributed to a natural occurrence. What tidings bringest thou from Dravania? We took a number of readings, and noticed that the closer we were to the tower, the lower the etheric density became. In short, the towers are drawing upon the land's ether, which would explain how they were able to carry out the summonings. Allies must be informed of this. We should return to the Rising Stones and have Tataru relay our findings to them. Hear me. Hear me. Oh shit. Hear me. Hear me. Oh shit. Darkness comes. Darkness comes. And with, and with it, that's her. Wait, the that's end. End. The, the fate, fate of the star. She's holding the mask. That is absolutely the girl in the poster. Who are you? 
Like, I'm wondering if it's actually Heidelin herself, but that'd be so fucking weird. Everything all right back there? That'd be real weird. Vinat? Eh? At solemn dawn, grim purpose shines and gazes cast toward moonlit sky. Thus does our final curtain rise, your steps to guide what end betides. <gasps> Ooh! Yeah, Vinat is the heart of Hydaelyn. That would make the most sense. Yeah, I don't know how that wouldn't be it, you know? I just, like, keep thinking on it. Yeah, I, I don't know how that wouldn't make sense. Has to be it. Okay, we officially finished Shadowbringers, and now I'm just gonna cry. Oh, wait, I need to do the shush emote. We just got it. All right, now I will leave you guys with the with a shush. We stay quiet until Endwalker. <laughs>